tengo una esposa americana, debería dar una vida de rey aquí. Me casé con una americana, entonces para quedarme aquí, para no tener nada, eso es como un cuento de terror. Your whole relationship is a horror story, Johan. But it's nice to see that you've finally taken off the mask and you're now showing us why you've allowed Danielle to treat you so badly up until now. I mean, there was always that suspicion, but it's nice to finally see the real Johan, his true motives. Entonces, en vez de tu echar para adelante, tú le diste un buen giro a tu vida, para atrás. ¿De qué te sirve el anillito ahí? How else will people know that you're a kept man without that ring? <laughs> but before we dive into the deep end, let's start at the beginning. So the last we saw them, we left a very disgruntled Johan at the visa office after finding out that Danielle won't be applying for his green card. He won't be moving to the States. Now we know it's always been Johan's dream to move to America. And with the possibility once again dangled so close but then ripped away, the question is, is this finally Johan's breaking point? Hoy voy al gimnasio, voy a entrenar, a ver si me relajo un poco y boto la tensión. Johan's working out with his cousin. We know how close he is to his family. And this is the perfect opportunity for him to vent, to let off some steam. You see, he's frustrated, really frustrated. And it's not just because he and Danielle really want a baby but haven't been able to conceive. Johan's also realising that all this time he's invested into Danielle might all be for nothing. She really has no intention of taking him back to America. La relación empezó, ella me contaba muchas cosas, me decía aquí vamos a tener una, una, una buena vida, que vamos a estar bien. Now, when they first met, Danielle told Johan a lot of things. She made a lot of promises that she didn't keep. She said that they'd live in America, only for her to then change her mind. She sold him this dream that their life would be easy. She'd give him the good life. She'd take care of it all. But that was obviously when she was pretending to be richer than she was. When she was pretending to be a better businesswoman than she was. That dream soon came crashing down. And the truth, as they stand here today, is very different from the dream that she sold him. Vivimos un apartamento, apartamento muy lindo, muy chulo, okay, alquilado, rentado. Wait, suddenly renting isn't good enough for him? Johan was clearly under the impression when he married Danielle that she'd be rich enough to buy them everything. But now he's seeing the truth, and it's not good enough. He feels like Danielle sold him a lie. But Johan. Really, Johan, are you forgetting where you've come from? The life she's giving you now, even if it is rented, is a far cry from the crowded house with no running water that you shared with your family. So are we finally getting to the root of why Johan stayed with Danielle for so long? Did he think that she'd give him even more? Ya tenemos tres meses viviendo aquí y Yo estaba esperando que, bueno, iban a comprar una casa, un vehículo. I mean, we all had our suspicions, didn't we? We were all wondering why he put up with Danielle's craziness for so long. They're so mismatched in just about every aspect. From their religious beliefs, their looks. I mean, he's a hunk of a man. Not that she's ugly, but she is punching above her weight. Definitely punching above her height. And she is more mature. She's an older lady. She's been pretty clear that that means it's highly unlikely that she'll be able to give him that baby he so desperately craves. And she's been honest about that. Yet he sticks around. He sticks around even though they can't communicate properly. They've frequently had to resort to translators for their most important conversations. And from all the nonsense we saw last season, from Danielle bringing her ex-boyfriend back into the picture, or Danielle being verbally abusive to Johan, there were just so many clues that he was tolerating her, not necessarily out of love. So what exactly is he after? I have a friend of mine, who is like a similar situation, he got a American wife, he bought a jipeta. Oh dear, it's pretty shocking to hear just how openly he talks about his expectations now. He reveals that in addition to that 4x4, that same friend also had an apartment bought for him. 
And that was before he got married to this American lady. Johan's jealous. He wants to be a sugar baby. And right now, he's all baby, but no sugar. Ella te vendió un sueño. Claro, así porque tiene que ponerle el punto claro. Porque mira el amigo tuyo, de novio, consiguió todo. Yes, Danielle's horrible. She's horrendous. She has a lot of issues. But Johan, Johan's not exactly a superstar himself. He definitely has his moments. And right now, he's acting very entitled. I mean, the man at one point last season, not that long ago, had three jobs. Now he's got none. Now he's entirely living off Danielle. Why? Well, it's becoming clear that he has no interest in working. He just wants to be a trophy husband. What Johan fails to realize is, in reality, America's not that different. As Danielle famously once said to him, the American dream isn't real. At least not how he seems to picture it. Life's tough. People spend their entire working lives with nothing to show for it. And it's even harder if you don't speak English, Johan. Sure, his situation in the DR is tougher than it would be in the States in a lot of ways. But if he thinks he's just going to move to America and magically the money's going to come rolling in, then he's in for a rude awakening. But he and his cousin just don't see it that way. Entonces, en vez de tu echar para adelante, tú le diste un buen giro a tu vida, para atrás. ¿De qué te sirve el anillito ahí? Hearing him talk like this sounds really cold. But keep in mind that in many countries, especially developing countries, marriage is still transactional. Sure, love can be involved, but often it's about power and wealth and the transfer of it that comes with the marriage. People marry to better themselves, to level up. So when Johan's cousin implies that he married Danielle to gain a better life for himself, is anyone actually surprised by this? I wonder to what extent Danielle knows Johan's true intentions. The fact that she's constantly brought up that topic of money shows that she's known all along what a big issue that is. It's always been a concern of hers. As to has the whole topic of moving to America. Johan's been very clear about that, so she can't pretend she doesn't know. But Danielle is also rather delusional. I wouldn't put it past her and her inflated ego to actually think that Johan's in love with her. Tengo una esposa americana. Debería dar una vida de rey aquí. Me casé con una americana, entonces para quedarme aquí, para no tener nada. Eso es como un cuento de terror. Yeah, not only do you not have a life of a king, the reality is, Johan, Danielle has a lot of debts. You guys are in the minus. But for now, Danielle is keeping up with pretenses. She's pretending to Johan that they can go and look at cars. Cars that they can maybe, possibly, definitely not buy. Today, we're going to go check out a car that Johan wants to buy. I feel like it's not the first thing that we should be investing our money in. So why go through the motions then? Why even go to look at cars if you know you're not going to get one? It's like she's desperately trying to keep alive this dream that she sold to Johan. But what she says is correct. This shouldn't be their priority. Keep in mind, they've only just been told that having IVF to give them that baby they crave will cost upwards of $11,500. So even if they were to do that months from now, well, that's still money that they have to put aside. But Johan doesn't care. He wants to drive around in a fancy car that they own. Hiring's not good enough. He wants to be able to hold his head high and somehow think that he's made it. Me gusta la Runel. La Runel. La vendimos la semana pasada. Pero tenemos más vehículos ahí. Vamos a traer la Nissan Frontier. 
Johan has his eyes on the same car he mentioned his friend had, the one who also married an American. That decision alone makes me think that Johan doesn't really have many of his own desires, ambitions or wants. It's purely a case of keeping up with the Joneses. His friend got a 4x4, so he wants a 4x4. It's all just for show. But for now, this car seller is turning out to be even more dubious than Johan. $32,000. I really like my cars with batteries. Both the car seller and Johan literally don't seem to care that the car isn't even starting. He claims the battery is dead, and that in itself should give us a clue as to how many people are looking for these sorts of cars. Now, this car doesn't exactly seem brand new, so you'd think that the price would reflect that, but at $32,000, Danielle isn't having it. They have other priorities to be thinking about. It costs us $30 a day to rent a car in the Dominican Republic. We don't need a car every day, so if we have that money, we should use that to invest in a house or an egg donor. It's becoming apparent that Johan has no concept of money. We're beginning to see why Danielle made such a big fuss at Johan's now-failed butcher shop all along. She was desperate to try and have him do some kind of financial planning, and it seems he could use it because he seems to have no clue how much money Danielle actually has in the bank. The price of this car has no effect on him at all. In fact, he scoffs at Danielle's reaction. Everything's expensive to you, he says. But that's because he doesn't want a wife who counts pennies. He wants a wife rich enough to buy anything he wants. Do you think that I have $30,000 in my account? No, sir. Okay, you don't have $30,000. Now, Danielle takes Johan aside to talk about their options, but just look at Johan's expression when she says she doesn't have $30,000. He seems almost disgusted. He's really dropped that mask. He's making no bones about showing his true feelings, and he's acting like a complete child. I can't comprehend the fact that these two think that they're ready to have a child. Sabe bien el carro, es el precio del carro. In the year that they've been together, Johan has clearly built up a lot of resentment towards Danielle. Now, the lid's off, and he's taking it all out on her all at once. He feels like he's been cheated out of a lifestyle that he was promised. But, unfortunately, he needs to grow up. He needs to take responsibility. And if he made the wrong choice, if he wanted a wife that would give him the life of luxury, sorry buddy, you messed up. You made a big mistake marrying Danielle, who at this point is about ready to bite back at him. She's actually the only one talking any sense. You think it's a sound financial decision because it's not your money. When it's your money, you think differently. You don't even want to pay for light. You run around the house turning the air off and we die. Johan has this wild expectation that he doesn't have to work or pay for anything because he married an American. As far as he's concerned, all Americans are loaded. He's made it. But whilst Danielle might have sold him a dream, at least initially, how has it taken a year for him to realise Danielle isn't going to pay for that life he thinks he deserves? You are the American who wants to live here in Dominican. You will pay all that. I don't have a job, I don't have to pay it. I don't have to pay it, as you say. Now, Johan rationalises this by saying it's all Danielle's fault. It's her fault he can't go to the States and earn some real money. If only he had his green card. But what on earth does he think he's going to do there? He's not educated, he hasn't built a career for himself, he's quit his jobs, and he still hasn't bothered to learn English. All he has is his body. But yeah, let's go to America. In the United States, there are more opportunities. The money you pay more, but if you want to make your life here, then she should pay for it. Can the same be said if the situation were reversed? If they move to the US, is Johan going to pay for it all? Is he going to become the provider, considering he's the one that wants to be there? No, of course not. I think we all know he'd still be reliant on Danielle. 
But it's interesting that the reason Daniel left the States in the first place is the exact reason Johan wants to leave the DR. She worked full time for decades and she felt she had nothing to show for it. ¿Qué trabajo tú tienes cuando tú pagas por todo en Estados Unidos? No sé. Are you going to buy Amazon? Like, what the f*** are you going to do that you think you're going to pay for everything with no English? It's harsh, but it's true, and it's exactly what Johan needs to hear. If being a trophy husband and moving to the States is really what he wants, well, sorry, but there's no two ways about it. He's with the wrong woman. If that's the case, then he needs to stop trying to have a baby with her. And he needs to think about whether or not this marriage is really for him. Johan thinks that he has an American wife who's going to completely enable him and support him, then he's picked the wrong American. I am not interested in having a kept man, I've made that very clear. Obviously, you haven't made that clear enough, Daniel, because Johan's under the impression that he is a kept man. He doesn't work, he doesn't make any money, yet you're still happy to take him out shopping for cars. That's a kept man if ever I've seen one. But Johan's next move now is going to be very interesting. Danielle seems like she's drawing a line in the sand. So where does Johan go from here? Would he really be prepared to divorce her? I mean, that would come with a drop in the quality of his life. That would mean he'd need to go and get a job again. So, for now at least, I suspect he's going to push for more, but he's going to settle for what he's given. Unless, of course, he can bag himself another American. Preferably a rich one.